So we can get very nice renders. You can go through here. We have matte caps. We have standard materials. You can make your own matte caps if you go through the matte cap uh, material video that I linked you guys earlier. You can adjust these materials in here. Let's go ahead and say, I'm going to take this material window. I'm going to go in here to modifiers. You also can see there's a wax modifier in here. So if you wanted to, we got this thing rendered. Right now it's using a matte cap gray. If we do have this material selected, uh, incidentally, if we, let's see if we have, just like when you're poly painting, if you turn on these colorized things here, if you can, I'm going to alt tap uh, this, if you turn this off, you can see you can alt tap this and you can see these are little highlighted um, areas here. So you can always go in here and you can paint. You can turn on RGB for a standard brush, turn off Z add. You can poly paint. This is just basic ZBrush functionality. I'm not going to bore you too much with this, but we can change it like a drag dot. Let's give it a little star alpha. Let's take that focus shift down to negative 100. Let's make this red or green. And it's going to inherit um, by default. If you have colorize off, it's going to inherit this color. So you can kind of preview it like this. It'll also inherit a new material. If you just hover over this, it'll show you your selected subtool with that material on it. And up here is matte cap. That is material capture. The lighting is baked into these materials. And in fact, if you go up to the lighting menu, the lights don't really, like if I move this light around, it doesn't really affect the object. In fact, the only thing it does affect is where the shadow is cast after I hit BPR. BPR is your best preview render. So now the shadow is being cast in a slightly different direction. So we have in material, and lighting and uh, what else? rendering all work together. All of these things work together to create the final image that you see on your screen. Now ZBrush is a real time program. So the matte caps allow you to see very complex, looks like complex shader operations in real time because again, it's baked in. So you can see these things update on the fly. And of course you can go in here and change these properties. So again, if we go up to our, I have a, oh also, so you see I have a startup material here uh, you also have MacCap Gray, so if you, I have MacCap Gray, I like to work in MacCap Gray, you may like to work in um, uh, Red Wax, so that's the startup material, or whatever you want to do, a Green Metallic's also a very popular one. So let's say I really like to work with MacCap Gray, I can select that one, and then in here you now have a Save as Startup material, so if you always want to start that up, then just go ahead and select that one. So yeah, we're going to talk about poly painting. So of course, we have our matte material is covering our object, colorizes off. Now, as soon as I start painting with this, let's say I want to put a red star in here, it's going to turn it red, but by default, the vertice, the vertex color on this object is going to be white. So when I drag this out, you're going to see it's going to kind of leave a little graphical glitch behind and put a red star on it. If I just turn the camera slightly, it's going to update and be like, oh, okay, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to poly paint on this object. So what I'm going to do for you is turn colorize on, and that's underneath poly paint here, colorize. And then now when I start dragging out, I'm going to turn off L for lazy mouse, turn that off. And now I can start dragging out these red stars. Or I can change this to a drag rect. And I can drag out stars like this. Um, or I can change my color. And I can drag out stars like this. You're going to see these colors updated. But that's because colorized is turned off. Now if I want to turn colorize on for all of my subtools, I can hold down shift. Touch that um, colorize that turns it off for everything. Hold down shift. Touch colorize turns it on for everything. Now it just turns everything white. Because again, the default vertex colors are white by default. But now if I alt tap on this one and I start dragging, now I'm gonna color on that. Of course, you can change your drag rec stroke to drag dots uh, or freehand. And uh, you can simply, if I turn lazy mouse back on and let's alt tap this one, you can kind of just drag through. It's also got pressure sensitive. You can go thin to thick to thin and it'll fade out as well. And you can go in here to your stroke. If you do have lazy mouse turned on by tapping L, you can crank that lazy radius up and now it'll go through and like stamp stars intermittently. And you can also do Z add as well. So if we turn on RGB and Z add, and I go through here and I start painting, it'll go through and it'll stamp, or you can hold down alt. Now if I hold on alt, it's gonna press in, but it's gonna do my secondary color. So if I wanna change that, I can touch that one. Let's say we can go into, uh, you know, pink, hold down alt, and now it'll st stamp inwards uh, pink. Now generally speaking, I only use poly painting for material IDs, uh, but you can of course paint, uh, you can paint through spotlight uh, faces. We've gone through this in um, previous, oh boy, let me see if I can find this one. This will be a tough one. We go to my channel and you search for poly paint maybe. We've talked about like poly painting faces through spotlight. This one kind of covers it, spotlight reference modeling, but we have gone through in earlier live streams and like taken this guy's head and then brought in like 3DSK images of people's faces. Ideally, you're going to have a polarized image, so it gets rid of the 
specular on the face and you could just paint your albedo information onto your say your stylized face or your high res um, face that you're trying to match uh, and then you can bake that poly paint off to a texture at any point and maybe we'll get to that too that's going to be in your uh, texture create here you can say um, create new from poly paint so if you have poly paint information on here you can convert that to a texture map if it has UVs now you have to it is, poly painting is a vertex operation you're basically you're essentially filling an object of a vertex with a vertex color. So if we have a cylinder 3D here, we go to edit mode and we go into make poly mesh 3D and we go to geometry or subtool, I'm sorry, and turn on colorize. So we just have a white cylinder here that's a polygon that we can uh, manipulate. So with our standard brush with Z add on, we can sculpt on it. If we turn on RGB, however, we want to paint, you're going to see, oh yeah, we're painting green here because um, this is our primary color selected. Um, you can paint green and you can sculpt green if you turn Z add off. You're going to see we can paint, but it's very, very low res. That's because it's only going to be able to paint uh, green for that vertex. Now, if we hit Control D, which is going down here to subdivide, you're going to see we're getting more resolution. And now we're able to paint very high res. And if you want to sample a color, you can tap C in anywhere in your interface. If you want to tap C up here, you can grab that orange, paint with the, that orange. If you want to tap C in here, it'll grab white. So you can go through here and you can poly paint like this. Poly paint can also work with the Z plugin poly group it. Nah, I'm probably not going to cover that today, but if you want more information on that, if you go to my playlist here, you can go and check out Inch, uh, ZBrush 418, ZBrush 2018, 418, uh, ZBrush 2018, what's new? And in here, there's all sorts of cool new stuff that's in ZBrush 2018, and poly group it's right there, 45. And then how to make use polygroup it to do a like hard surface armor type thing. So we're painting with color. We can also paint with material. So because I don't, I haven't assigned a material to this object. It's just kind of sitting there because uh, I've only been using RGB. If I'd been using MRGB, I'd also be painting with the material. But since I haven't, I can go through here and switch this to other materials. So we can say we like this material. Let's go to color. You can fill an object with a color. So I can fill it completely with like red, or I can take my RGB intensity, drop it down, and I can fill it with like 20% red, give it a little tint. I can keep filling it with that color, or I can go to white and keep filling it with that color to kind of knock it down a little bit. 